Hey, this is Will Chandler. Uh, I'm going to read you guys an email that I recently sent out to some people. And uh, I'm going to ask for your help in just getting some exposure on this topic. And as I read it, I'll, I'll be changing some of the... I'll be change, adapting it a little bit as I read it just to protect information and whatnot. All right, so here we go. My name is Will Chandler. On 9-11-2001, my platoon, the Presidential Salute Battery, were first responders at the Pentagon and were there for the entirety of the Pentagon mission, Operation Noble Eagle. Lieutenant Smith, a West Point grad platoon leader on 9-11-2001 and I, set up a Zoom call this past September 11th anniversary for our men from those historic and dark days. Many of our brothers could not attend, and we do not have contact information for many of them. We have also heard through the grapevine that some of us may be dead. Lieutenant Smith and I are in the process of trying to find our men, and I have reached out to multiple veteran organizations for assistance. One of the things we discussed, that would be during the Zoom call, was how we were betrayed by the leadership at the Pentagon. At the end of Operation Noble Eagle, an officer, I believe it was a major from the Pentagon's legal office, came down to our company area and rounded up the lower enlisted and some of the non-commissioned officers from our platoon. I can't recall that anyone above Staff Sergeant was there. We were forced, under threat of UCMJ action, that's Uniform Code of Military Justice, like the law basically for conduct in the Army, you know, the military. So we were forced, under threat of UCMJ action and or dishonorable discharge, to sign paperwork he had for us. The gist of the legal documents was that if we got sick from exposure due to the hazardous conditions as first responders at the Pentagon, that we would not sue the government. Excuse me. <clears throat> this tells me that some of the top brass at the Pentagon expected us to get sick and die. For the first three days of Operation Noble Eagle, we were sent into the Pentagon with no protective equipment. Everyone, to my knowledge, that took part in Operation Noble Eagle got a certificate thanking us for doing our part. The certificate is signed by a command sergeant major and a major general. The certificate reads as follows. U.S. Army Military District of Washington, Certificate of Achievement presented to Will Chandler for exceptionally meritorious support of Operation Noble Eagle. On behalf of the United States Army, thank you for the tremendous support you provided to the Pentagon Rescue and Recovery Operation. Your efforts reflect the nation's commitment to the soldiers and public servants who lost their lives during the horrific attack on September 11, 2001. Quickly responding during a time of great need, your actions were invaluable and will inspire others to support the Army and the nation in our war to defeat terrorism. I was also awarded an Army Achievement Medal for my part during Operation Noble Eagle, PO number 291-27, 18 October 2001. The following year or so, as an E-5, I was also the Acting Platoon Sergeant for the President's Salute Battery as a member of the Old Guard. Uh, I was the Acting Platoon Sergeant for about 45 uh, days at some point, um, like I said, a year and a half or so after, year, year and a half. I have recently been been in touch with the strategic with excuse me. I have recently been in touch with uh, a strategic communications officer from the U.S. Army Center of Military History. I contacted his organization, among others, about help with finding our men, adding to the interviews that were done of us for the National Archives and plans for the 25-year memorial of 9/11 at the Pentagon. He told me that a book prepared by the Center of Military History about the attack on the Pentagon, it was developed using many of the interviews of those that were there. Now that it's called, Then Came the Fire. That's Then Came the Fire. I want to take you to page 282 of that book. Captain Frams, who's the one interviewing Captain Green, were your guys in protective clothing? Captain Green, yes. Before they would go in, they would suit up in their white suits, the boots. The suits were taped at the boots. They had the gloves, the masks, the helmet. They would go in, they would do their job, and then they were deconned, decontaminated, after they were finished and they were coming out. If they ripped a suit while they were in, they would come back out and go in with a new suit. 
<sighs> now, Captain Green was our company commander on 9-11-2001, Hotel Company of the Old Guard. Hotel Company had all the specialty platoons of the Old Guard. Guns, or Presidential Salute Battery, as we're also known. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, Quezon, the Drill Team, and the Ceremonial MPs. Now, why would Captain Green be prompted to talk about our protective equipment? Why would Captain Green casually leave out that for the first three days that we were sent into the Pentagon, we were given no protective equipment? It sure feels like fuckery is afoot from my perspective. Captain Green is the one, as company commander, who signed and recommended my Army Achievement Medal from the Pentagon mission. In the comments, he added, Specialist Chandler served as the gun's security force squad leader during the 18-day mission. His hard work and dedication ensured success in all missions. Now, I, pr I propose that the Pentagon actively has tried to cover up that they expected us to die from exposure due to their failure. I'm going to read... Um, there's three achievements uh, for the medal that were written down for it and that got approved as our Army Achievement Medal from 9 11. Uh, achievement one says Specialist Chandler aided military and civilian authorities in the recovery and removal of remains from the Pentagon crash site under hazardous conditions. Achievement two served in the capacity of heavy labor and light labor workforce in the removal of debris from the crash site. Achievement three provided continuous support to federal and local authorities in securing the perimeter of the crash site to include the securing of classified documents. <clears throat> so, I did some looking. Now that's, that's oh, let me finish. That uh, almost sums it up. It says, I am writing to you in an effort to find allies. I need people at my back as the time to fully expose this wrong and to right it will be here soon. Would you and or your affiliates be interested in helping to expose this at the correct time? And I put down, I look forward to hearing back from you, blah, blah, blah. Very respectfully, Will Chandler. Now, I wasn't planning on making this video uh, so soon. I was going to make one like it at some point. But after I got looking into a couple of days ago, uh, the captain that interviewed our company commander, Captain Green at the time, and I found his bio and where he had been and saw that um, he, is wor he was working as a historian and speechwriter for the office of the uh, chief of staff at the Army at the time that he interviewed Captain Green. Now, whether or not he was fed those questions, uh, he knew that the answers were false, or whether he was just told to ask these questions, obviously, I don't know. Now, another note is that he is now a retired colonel and serving as the Director of Veterans Services at the South Carolina uh, Veterans Affairs Office. Now, after discovering that and then realizing that uh, it goes up to possibly possibly implicating the office of the chief of staff of the army. That was a couple of days ago. And then yesterday, I received a text from a phone number. I just said hello. And that was it. That, you know, every now and then, very rarely, something like that will happen to me. Not often at all. And I was just like, ah, that's weird. And then I decided to do some digging today and just checked out that number. And a very cursory search uh, of the internet showed that that number was associated with a charity that um, helps helps feed uh, feed the the hungry in the, in the nation. And then, upon looking up who founded that for that foundation, it was the granddaughter of President President G H W Bush. So. I find it rather extremely odd, the timing of me getting a text from a random number I've never seen before that then is linked to a member of the Bush family within within a day of me figuring out that it looks like that it's at least the chief of staff of the Army's office that was covering up 
the toxic exposure that we experienced uh, at the Pentagon crash site on 9-11 and the subsequent days. So that's, uh, that's the gist of the video for now. And I just ask your help in getting this information out there. Um, you know, there's a few different theories on what that text could be. Could it be a completely random coincidence? Yeah, of course it could be. It could be one of those things that the universe just says, hey, look at this and laughs at you, right? So it could be one of the most insane coincidences I've ever seen in my life. So that is a possibility. And obviously it's, it's going to most likely 99.9% chance it's a cloned number, right? So the other option is maybe there was someone sending me a clue or maybe it was a random event that sent me a clue down the rabbit hole to say maybe, maybe it was uh, Bush's office that, um, that ordered the cover up of our toxic exposure. Um, and then there's also maybe it, maybe it was a little bit of a warning. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. Maybe, uh, let me know what you guys think. But again, that's why I'm making this video prematurely earlier than I would have wanted to, because I'm just, uh, just want it to be out there and give a little bit more insulation and insurance, uh, to me and my family. So anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a great night.